Hi, this is cycle two, week 18 science. This is experiment 185 ramp in Van Cleve's book. This is a really neat demonstration uh, and your students will enjoy it. This is a good opportunity um, to, to talk about um, simple machines, to talk about inclined planes, uh, and to show students uh, what is happening. So uh, in terms of setting up this experiment, you, you need a piece of paper, you need some tape, you need um, a pencil, and a ruler uh, will be very helpful um, as well. Uh, in order to do this experiment, you need to be able to construct pieces of paper, a square and a rectangle. You need to be able to cut these out. So for the, the younger kids, that they may not be able to do that very precisely. It needs to be relatively square <laughs> and relatively rectangular. So, um, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. So use your best judgment. If you've got little kids, ABC Darians, and maybe you want to do that beforehand. If you've got older kids, uh, let them cut it out. Let them use a ruler and let them measure and, and cut it out. Now, if you're gonna take that approach, then talk about uh, sort of the big two divisions uh, of scientists. Talk about theoretical science and experimental or, ha uh, or hands-on science. So, you know, the famous theoretical physicists are people uh, like Schrodinger or um, Einstein. Um, um, famous experimental uh, physicists are people like um, Faraday or Fermi. Um, so, um, Nobel Prize winners all the way around. It doesn't matter, of course. Um, both, both sets, both big divisions of science are important, um, but they have a little bit of a different skill set. Um, that's involved. And so for the kids, if they're going to make their own paper, then they're being experimental scientists today uh, talking about um, inclined planes. Okay, so as I mentioned, the first thing that um, you need is, is to cut out a, a square and a rectangle. Um, you want to highlight to your students uh, the important point is that the squ my square and rectangle have the same height. Right, so that's a question you could ask them. You, know, you could set them down. What's, what do we see that's the same about these two shapes? What do we see that's different? There's all kinds of things, right? They have, they, they have um, four sets of 90 degrees. The, they, have, um, they have the same, one, one side is the same, but of course the other side is drastically different. In fact, this piece is almost three times longer uh, than, our, than our square. Uh, that part doesn't matter, but you do want it to be at least twice as long uh, as the square uh, for, for this demonstration. So um, once, once we've constructed these things, then what we want to do, that's where the ruler comes in handy in addition to the measuring, uh, we want to make a line and then we want to cut the square um, with some scissors and make a triangle, all right? So we want to make a triangle. Similarly, we want to draw a diagonal line across our rectangle and we want to cut it so that we make another triangle. And again, we can emphasize uh, with our students and they can see that the one side of our triangle is the same, right? One side of the triangle is the same. And then finally, I didn't mention uh, a crayon or a marker uh, would be helpful because what I would do is I would have the students then color the edge of the, of the, of the hypotenuse of our triangle. Color the, that's a light green. The, the dark blue is probably a little bit easier uh, to see. But okay, so they, they want to color on the edge. And then what we want to do is take a, a pretty small piece of tape and again, I would um, use your best judgment, but uh, the bigger kids, I think, can certainly do this. Um, we want to put the, the, the piece of uh, paper on one edge of the pencil. This is a sort of an old-fashioned wooden pencil, and it's actually um, hexagonal in shape, which is really nice because it has a flat surface that I can tape to. Some modern-day pencils are, are just pure cylinders. Those work just fine, but it's just a little tip to, to make it work a little bit smoother. So what I want to do then now is attach my triangle, the edge of my triangle, to my pencil. So I'm gonna fold that paper around there, and then I'm going to do the same thing down the length of it now. So a couple more. But what you really, where you really, really want to attach, at a minimum, to attach really straight, is at the top um, and the bottom. My lovely assistant is a southpaw. She's a left-hander. She could probably do that part right there a lot easier than me, like so many other things. Okay, so we're gonna fold our tape down like that. Okay, and now what we're going to do then is we're going to apply some tension to our, our um, triangle. And now I think I'm gonna need one more piece of tape. So once I got the two edges set, now I'm actually gonna go parallel with uh, parallel with the the, ang the angle of the, the pencil like that. Okay. All right, so now I'm attached. Now I'm going to put some tension on it 
And now we're going to roll it. Okay, so we're going to roll. We're going to, we're going to watch this bottom edge. We don't want it to slide up and down very much. We want to really minimize that. So I'm keeping pretty close watch on that as I'm rolling. Of course, it's, the paper is wrapping around the pencil, and so the sort of the diameter is getting a little bigger, right? But in practice, that paper is going just like that. And now what I'm going to do is tape it again. All right, so now I'm gonna tape my little edge just like that, okay? What do I have? What does this remind you of? Candy cane. <laughs> Maybe that's just me. Um, it could remind you of a lot of different things. It could remind you of a winding road, a winding road up a mountain, for example. Um, it could remind you, so uh, and our son is in um, Boy Scouts. We do quite a bit of mountain hiking, and so we're always looking for some switchback routes, right? Uh, where, where that is, we're looking for routes that kind of lead us up the mountain, kind of like this, which is a lot. What's going on. So if we start here with one point, and if we keep our finger on the blue line as best we can. Then as we turn the paper, we see very clearly that our finger begins to rise, right? It begins to, and you can walk, you can have your students walk all the way up. Let me, um, so it, this this is the first one. We, we want to do the other one in very much the same way. And now, for uh, and by doing this, then uh, the, the, the need to have the, the triangles have the one edge, or the one um, side, the same, uh, link I, I hope will become clearer. So I'm, I'm putting a big piece of tape there, and I'm going to put two small pieces on the bottom and the and the top, just like before, so that we can try this again. So I did it with the the long triangle first, and now I'm going to do it with our shorter triangle. So now we're going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to put some tension on it, and I'm going to roll our piece of paper. So effectively, again, what we're doing is we're making a candy cane. We're making um, a winding road um, as, it, as it's going over as it's going over uh, a mountain. And then the students can do the same thing. They can start with their finger at the bottom and keep it on the, the green line. I hope it's visible on our video. And you can see we, we again move up. So now if we look then at our two, there's a lot of similarities here, right? It's two triangles wrapped around a piece uh, of paper. The um, the distance, the it's most easily seen in our in our blue uh, triangle. The the length of that blue triangle is hypotenuse is much 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 bigger than this distance here, right? And so that blue line is a lot longer than it is. Than it, than it is just the, the line to go up here. But as I mentioned a, a moment ago, the Boy Scouts are always looking for switchback routes. Why? Because it's a lot easier to travel up an inclined plane than it is to try to make giant steps up, up a mountain. It's like when we're moving, if you're physically moving big objects, say a, a giant piano, right? Um, the, the bed of the U-Haul truck or rider or whatever truck, rent, rental truck you have, you know, it's only a few feet off the ground. But to pick up a massive object and just heft it up and onto the truck and move it in is, is, is daunting, maybe even impossible, depending on how heavy it is and how many guys you have, whether you have pulleys, things like that. But every, every rental truck like that has a ramp that's built in and it just slides down. And so you, you push the weight of that object up the ramp. So as we're pushing it up the ramp, we're pushing it up an inclined plane. It's a lot like traveling up this, this blue line or this green line. Um, and so we're able to do that. Then an inclined plane is an example of a simple machine because it makes uh, le it requires less force to move the object. The, the, the full conceptual understanding of, of why an inclined plane requires less force, I think, is really beyond the scope of a foundations class. Um, but it's certainly something you could turn your students on to and, and can provide them resources and, and help them dig into it more. Um, uh, it, it's, a good, it's a good high school level kind of physics question. Um, and, and so there's certainly resources out there to do. But the inclined plane, what I would say to your students, especially those who are most curious is, at, at a minimum, I think they can think about you know, objects being moved from a house like up a ramp, um, maybe if they do hiking, you know, switchbacks. Those are all practical examples of inclined planes. 
Um, and, and the basic idea is when a, when a mass is sitting on an inclined plane, then in part, because of that structure, the angle that the, the inclined plane is making, then um, there, part of that mass is being supported by the inclined plane. And so it's easier to move, to, less force, to move the object uh, on, on the plane. Um, again, as a very conceptual um, understanding that, that students can have. Okay, so then, and so that's what this is, is illustrating. So now, why two triangles? And why triangles that were the same height, right? So if I line them up, see where is, there's, there you go. So again, we, we've already discussed how the two triangles are the same height. And so we can see, with a little bit of difficulty, that, that, they're, that the two people, they're, they're wrapped about the same. But the blue line is, of course, much, much longer. The hypotenuse of the blue triangle was much longer than the hypotenuse of the green triangle. And that's reflected in the, the, the number of, of times it wraps around, right? Let's count them. I see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Over here, it's wrapped one, two, three, four. From base, one, two, three, four, right? Okay, and so uh, in part then, the blue line is much longer, the hypotenuse is much longer than the green hypotenuse on that triangle, and so as we wrap it around the cylinder, then it wraps around many more times, uh, which means even less force would be required, and this would be a much easier hiking route than even the green, and both are much, much easier than trying to just hike over the top of the mountain, um, as, as it were. So this um, is a really neat hands-on experiment. Again, for the bigger kids, they can be theoretical. Uh, I mean, they could be experimental scientists and, and do the work uh, themselves, they can understand the theory. They can understand what's happening um, behind it. Um, I think this one is a lot of fun. This is um, another another way that you might add on to this experiment is to talk about Archimedes' screw. It's a, a very famous example of a positive displacement pump. Um, it's a principle that uses um, the, the idea of traveling the water um, in an inclined plane in order to move. Um, it would be a good add-on. Uh, it's also a good add-on um, to experiment 184, Lifter, uh, in Van Cleve's book. Um, if you're interested in the Archimedes screw and maybe looking at an easy way to make one at home, then uh, check out our video on experiment 184 um, as we have an example of a homemade Archimedes screw um, in there. But it would complement either um, experiment 184 or, or 185 uh, very well. Uh, this is fun stuff, and I know your students are going to uh, enjoy it. This is uh, Cycle 2, Week 18 Science.